you know, as I was setting up this this live stream, I tried to give the the stream on Twitch the title, which is Humongous Entertainment Developer Brad Tyler plays Fatty Bear's birthday surprise, but it seems mm -hmm. that Fatty is a banned word on Twitch. So now the title is Brad Taylor plays Bear's birthday surprise. That's funny. Uh, last night I, I saw an ad for um, a movie called uh, Imaginary. Have you seen mm -hmm. that ad yet? No, uh, not yet. <laughs> There's a little teddy bear uh, that looks like Fatty Bear that is a monster which is terrorizing this family. Uh, which I found uh, kind of funny. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Just like Disney lost the rights to Winnie the Pooh, not the design, but to Winnie the Pooh itself. And uh -huh. so they can release horror movies. There was one just released a couple of years ago, or yeah, two or three years ago. And now the sequel is coming out. So just think that in 50 years or so, when Fatty Bear loses its copyright, then we'll see Fatty Bear horror movies. I, I can imagine. Uh, I, I don't want to look too far into the fan art of uh, any particular product. <laughs> the internet has, you know, <laughs> ruined that. Fatty Bear's fun pack installed. Oh, excellent. In case we want to have extra content. Okay, now for the intro. Probably. Okay. everyone, happy Saturday and welcome to another episode of Text Play in which I play games with the developers and artists that I've interviewed in the past. And today we're going to play Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise with none other than Brett Taylor, who worked at LucasArts and at Humongous Entertainment. And we'll, I'm going to bring him on in just a sec. In the meantime, i uh, let you know that this is the fourth stream this week. It's been a busy week, so you might want to catch up on all the streams. We played Under a Killing Moon with um, no Antweiler, and we showcased 300 unearthed photos from the production of Phantasmagoria with Roberta Williams and, and Tori Marcel who will be busy tomorrow because she's going to accompany her husband to the Academy Awards because he's nominated for the holdovers. So we should uh, all hope that holdovers will win all of the awards it's nominated. And yesterday we played again Under a Killing Moon with Noah Antweiler. So you've got a lot to catch up on. And... Now that we're back to the usual schedule, then that means that text play will move to Saturdays. So we're probably going to have four live streams per week, depending on whether or not there's a text play episode that week. That's it. Our coffee and Patreon members, I, I added early access to my conversation with Prince of Persia creator Jordan Mechner to our coffee and patreon members so you can watch that if you want 
and the conversation will premiere on March 17th. So you'll have access until Thursday or so. And then I'll turn that link into a premiere link. And that's it. So you'll be able to watch it before everyone else as Patreon and Coffee members. Speaking of, let me thank our Patreon members, $10, $20, and top tier. Thank you guys for keeping conversations with Curtis and tech talk with Daniel Albu and text play alive. And here are our top seven coffee members, coffee donors. In the last 30 days, CJ, CompuArt, Schwex, Nolan, Moffitt Reborn, Ozzy Astaroth, and Joseph Austin. That's it. So without further ado, you welcome, Brad Taylor. Brad, what's up? Not much. Uh, we're, hopefully, we won't dinner. Uh, you know, I uh, won't uh, embarrass myself too poorly on a three-year-old title. <laughs> well, I think it will take us less than four hours, which was the length of our first stream. The second one was three and a half hours, when we tried to beat each other in Moonbase Commander, and, and again. I haven't established whether we're just as good or just as bad. So um, I, I'll, I, I'll consider us as just as good as the other in, in Moonbase Commander. Well, with games, if you're enjoying it, I think that it's, it's, a, it's a win. So True, true. And so today we're going to play... Fatty Bear's birthday surprise, or as it's currently called on Twitch, Bear's birthday surprise. And when was the last time you played that game? Oh, goodness. Um, probably sometime around 98, 99. Uh, and how so was it? It's, it, it's, been, yeah, a it's while. been a while. Wait, so you played it <laughs> immediately after you you shipped it or you didn't play it at all oh, at I, the time? I, I played it at the time. Uh, there were a number of uh, click points and whatnot uh, that mm -hmm. needed attention. Um, we had a big giant ball that bounces towards the screen out of a couch, which just killed performance. So we had to make a few adjustments. But uh, uh, Because of the high it. quality animations? Uh, just because of the percentages of the screen uh, being updated. Uh, mm -hmm. We had some low end targets at the time and they were just weren't, you know, capable of updating the full screen at 10 frames a second. Uh, so that's interesting because back then at LucasArts, they developed the, the insane system, which was used for the full screen animations. And they start using that for the full screen animations in full throttle and, and the dig. So you made the adjustments to make it work in Scum, which at the time, if I remember, it was 40% of the screen. You could animate only 40%. Uh, well, technically, we could animate as much of the screen as we wanted, uh, just the targets couldn't. Um, so yeah, about 40 to 60% was pretty much what we tried to keep everything <laughs> under. Um, that's why we have a nice big interface and all of that. Awesome. So today we're going to play a bit. We're going to play the intro of the Hebrew version, and then we're going to play the English version. And, and speaking of the Hebrew version in uh, Israel, the, if you look at my screen, you can see what I'm uh, just showing. And in Israel, the game was called Winnie the Pooh. At a birthday party. Now, the, really? the CEO of the publishing company that published this game in, in Israel, which was Mirage Software, was a scam artist. And so he didn't care about copyright. And so even though in the game itself, Fatty Bear has a different name. He's called Balloon Bear, not Fatty Bear balloon bear but on the cover art they called it Winnie the Pooh 
I bet that influenced uh, sales. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine it didn't. Wow. So, yeah. And this is the back, the back cover. And again, they mentioned that it's Winnie the Pooh, even though people after they, they, they'll purchase the game, they'll soon find out that it's not Winnie the Pooh. And it's clearly better, better product. <laughs> and so you see, we have all of the, I think it's pretty similar to the English cover art, just with, with false advertising at best. And we also had this, which was, you know, various activities in the manual. Did you have that in the English manual as well? Uh, I don't think, I, I don't remember that. No. Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit. No, if I can't zoom that in. Um, so we had uh, some uh, little activity books that came with the uh, the English version as well, but I don't remember uh, that. Okay. So I anyway, you know, it's not a problem nowadays, like we said in the countdown, because Winnie the Pooh is now public domain. So it might as well be called Winnie the Pooh at the birthday party. Disney can sue, can no longer sue. I'm okay. surprised that we didn't get sued, uh, to be honest. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't think that they'll sue Humongous Entertainment more, more like they, they'll sue the publishing company. I presume you guys didn't know about it back in the day, so it wasn't your problem. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't, I don't remember ever, you know, seeing this uh, version ever in my entire life. So I, I'm, I'm curious. I actually should uh, get the files and disassemble them to see exactly what they did. So one of the things, one of the interesting things is that it's smaller than the English version. The English version is about 14 megabytes in size and the Hebrew version is 12. So either we had better compression or we used shorter sound files, but either way, it's interesting that it was released on CD-ROM when you could actually just release it on floppies. I mean, back then you had Monkey Island 2 or the Amiga was 11 floppy disks. And so disk swapping, we were, we were pretty accustomed to disk swapping. So I presume that it was okay for this game as well. By the way, how was it so small? Oh, uh, well, combination of compression and just uh, great optimization. Uh, the team really knew what they were doing. By that point, we had done, you know, both uh, had Moon in progress and uh, Putt Putt. So our art staff was just nailing it uh, visually and keeping the, you know, the individual elements in motion, which they could do motion of like have an individual item kind of arc over the screen, but use the same cell. Uh, so it didn't have to store that a second or a third or fourth time. It could just reference that. So any, you know, sub component refer re-referencing, uh, the animations could be longer and all of that. It's interesting that yeah. also the sound files, you know, they may be heavily compressed, but they still sound good, you know, for a 1993 game. So what compression did you use? Did you use anything proprietary for Humongous or did you just use the compression that was available it, at the time? It was just the compression that was available at the time, which more or less um, was 11k or 11,025, you know, bytes per per second, um, which was, you know, the cards could do better. Um, but that was, you know, what we one quarter of uh, CD quality was what we shot for. So, sounds funny nowadays that you shoot for one quarter of CD quality. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. Well, at the time, it was a uh, a big step to have that much voice in a product. Uh, and, uh, you know, a CD was a, a gift from God, if you will. <laughs> uh, the ability to store all that data. Uh, we got a little lazy later on with it, that's for sure. But, you know, when I look at all of the all of the LucasArts adventure games that came out on CD with the, their full talkie versions, they were usually around 80 megabytes or 100 megabytes in size. So you didn't have to compress the sound that much because even if you use the, the 44 kilohertz and 16 bit sounds, you would still have enough space on that CD. So at that point, I'm not sure if this particular combination of, of low quality sound was used because computers might not handle high quality sound by playing it or decompressing it, or were you just accustomed to using that particular thing? Uh, well, our tool su suite, if you will, was all set up for, you know, 8-bit 11K. Um, so that's what our... Uh, production staff was used to, you know, getting things sampled down to that quality level. Um, there was the amount of RAM that we had. So we had to bring obviously content off of whatever medium was uh, storing it. And there was a limited finite amount of RAM and DOS, um, especially on the lowest end platforms where, you know, we were working with probably about 200 K of memory. Uh, really, in the working set of the the game, uh, after um, the engine was loaded and whatever DOS was loaded and the sound drivers, less that's around 200k. Um, so everything had to fit in RAM, and having it so small um, was well necessary. Okay, so I, I presume that the at that point in time it was more of a memory issue and not a disk space issue certainly not on the uh cd it wasn't a disk space <laughs> issue uh, on those early games that's for sure um but yeah memory was more of the case um when we went to um different platforms like we went to the 3do we had uh like a megabyte on the heap so we were able to you know bump up the uh the audio quality to uh 22 kilohertz and uh do 16-bit sound, uh, which was much better. And then you could write on the cover art, now with half the quality of CD audio. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Let me start the Hebrew version. We'll watch the intro, and then we'll move on to the English one. Wow. <laughs> So the text wasn't translated. It was probably too difficult. Laila tov, Shira. Laila tov, Baba. Mahar yesh li yom uledet. Vima Baba shali amru shay mekhinim li aftaa anakit. Laila tov, Dubon Balon. Tiyay yelet tov. Ani oevet otcha Dubon Balon. יש עבודה רבה לעשות לפני ששירה תתעורר. אני רוצה להכריז לעוגת יום הולדת ענקית ומקסימה. אוי, כמה שהיא תהיה מופתעת. כדאי שגם אני אתחיל לעבוד. יש לי עוד המון עבודת קישוט. אני אפילו הולך... Yeah, it sounds like they, they had a lot of clipping in the recording. הולכת להכין לשירה שלט ברכה יום הולדת שמח ללוח המודעות שלה. אוי, אוכבת. זה נשמע נפלא. אני צריך ללכת למטבח ולהכין את עוגת יום ההולדת של שירה. דובן בלון, אתה רוצה עזרה בהכנת עוגת יום ההולדת? אני מנקה משהו משהו. וואו, תודה לך בטיל דרדבת, זה יהיה נחמד. Sounds like it was recorded, you know, with a microphone that came with a sound blaster, the sound blaster kit. It definitely has some uh, 
clipping issues there. <laughs> I, I expected uh, his voice to be a little uh, softer. No, they, uh, they just, I, I guess they he, either he had a cold at, at the time or he just talked like this. Let's play the, the actual game. Good night, Kayla. Good night, Dad. Tomorrow's my birthday. And Mom and Dad did have a big surprise for me. Good night, Fatty Bear. You be good. <sighs> I love you, Fatty Bear. There's a lot of work to do before Kayla wakes up. I want to make her a big, beautiful birthday cake. Oh, will she ever be surprised? I better get busy, too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. I'm even going to make Kayla a happy birthday sign for her bulletin board. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds wonderful. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. Fatty Bear, would you like some help making the birthday cake? I'm a heck of a cleaner-upper. Oh, yes. Thank you, Matilda Rabbit. That would be nice. I remember that uh, sound uh, causing problems at one point. Um, it uh, its looping was really short and had clipping in it. Uh, remember that? Well, I presume that the English version was recorded in a recording booth and not in a warehouse <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, with, with a guy that only knows what quality of equipment. Yeah, it's interesting. All okay. right, so am I, am I going to control this beast? Y yep. Just place the mouse cursor on the zoom window. All right, let's see. Well, I have two zoom windows, and one of them isn't interactive. So not, not the zoom window with... And my zoom window in which you see both of us. You have a separate zoom window in which you'll see the game. There you go. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday oh, cake. Oh, here we go. I see. <laughs> well, this uh, is a lot lower resolution than I remember it being at the time. Uh, you know, I guess full screen really is... Uh, I'm just playing it here at you know 2560 by 1440. <laughs> <laughs> it's Actually, it's double pixel. the size of what it should be. You're seeing it at double the size. All right, so let's see. What? Uh, interestingly, this is, I believe, the last product that we used walk boxes in. So really? Uh, yeah. So uh, what did you use afterwards? Uh, we went with um, <laughs> animations that didn't have to. Uh, go from point to point um we we drew them the enters and exits so the characters would come to a, what we call the root spot and then work out from there like you know the character would almost always you know come in from one side of the screen scroll in um with like freddy and uh, luther they were separate actors but they didn't uh, follow walk boxes if that makes any sense. So he's a, a scaling, walking, talking actor, um, more like um, Guybrush. You know, he probably has the same exact uh, um, animation set as far as, you know, reach, um, pick up, uh, walk, and talk. Um, and you can see the quality scaling here. Uh, yeah. Fatty Bears. Well, scaling is your department. Yeah, yeah, it was certainly uh, <laughs> at the time. I need uh, to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. 
All right, let's see. I love the fact that Fatty's Fatty Bear is getting impatient and just telling you what to do. <laughs> well, you have to coax just a little bit. Does this work in the uh, version that we have? Oh, yes. This uh, required some interesting uh, hacks because uh, at the time we had were limited. I believe it was uh, 16 actors at the uh, uh, thing, but we couldn't um, afford to draw them all in this. It was just really, really quite slow. So we did the stamping of the actors. Also, uh, the little um, carrot. animation on the, yeah. the carrot animation doing the little dance there, I believe is done with uh, color cycling. I don't think that was actually animation. It's color cycling, if I remember correctly. It makes sense because they're just there's just too many elements being animated at the same time. And I'm pretty sure that at the time it was pretty complicated to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's uh, all color cycling, which is uh, oh. kind of cool. I think uh, Brad Carlton uh, drew that carrot. Or he drew the carrots in the... Uh, in the garden, for sure. The ones that uh, run and uh, trip and fall. You know, we also used them, I think, in the credits as well. They were pretty cool. Let's see. So do we want to just blaze through this? I assume you don't need to... No, you can play the lettuce game. Someone bleep okay. bloop in the chat wants you to play the lettuce game, so... Make some sort of monstrosity. Two noses. There we go. Needs more Two carrot. Noses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, this was a, a pretty cool thing at the time. I, I remember uh, Brett, I believe, was the person that was... Brett Barrett mm -hmm. was the person that was responsible for this particular screen. And uh, he had a chock full of, you know, uh, requests and why isn't this working uh, faster than it <laughs> than it does and i presume that that after you create this mini game inside the game you figured that you might as well just release the re release a bunch of mini games separately with uh, activity packs with fatty bears yes. activity pack and the butt butt activity pack yeah that is a grin and stimpy like nose isn't it I'm sure it had something uh, of an influence on us, on our staff, that's for sure. So Ozzy in the chat asks, are there any secrets or Easter eggs in this game Brad may know of? Oh, Things that I haven't been uncovered yet. Secret. I don't think there are any secrets. Uh, we had some uh, assets that were different in the demo. Like, uh, it was one of the first uh, times we actually did assets for a demo that didn't make it into the final game. Which was kind of, uh, I believe there's a, uh, uh, where he uh, is on a skateboard and he goes by the house. Uh, I think that was all for just the demo. Uh, I'm, but that doesn't really count as a secret. So you guys Batman were in the game? busy with the. Uh, so. No, Batman is a reference to the fact that Fantasy Magura 2 had a Batman Easter egg. Gotcha, gotcha. By the way, uh, by the way, when I won't, I have, I didn't play this game back when I was a kid, and the first time I played it was when my daughter played it for the first time, and then she got stuck. I don't remember where, and I couldn't figure out the puzzle myself, so I had to look up a walkthrough. Interesting. Well, hey, that pickle! <laughs> <laughs> the, hey, the what, you twinkle toes? The walk for, for Putt Putt is one page. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I think it, in the, those days we uh, introduced the Go Fast Key. Uh, so you could uh, hold down, it would double the speed of the audio and uh, unthrottle 
to some degree the uh, frame rate cl uh, clamp and it would just jet around the screen. <laughs> but but would, you know, sit there and vibrate. Let's see. Well, I don't think there's anything you have to do in here. We've played with the major. Uh, actually, we didn't. We didn't play all the click point, click points. No, nope, maybe we do play all the click points. So Annie Fox wrote this game, and I interviewed her a while ago, and asked her if she remembers anything from the production of this game. And Did she you didn't have anything. Nope. <laughs> no recollection of it, huh? None uh, whatsoever. A, a rare scrolling screen, even. I remember this being a little bit more snappy than this. It's, in, it's interesting that he, you guys were confident enough that the scrolling screen would work back in 1993 when still in 1994 in King's Quest 7, for example, they still had the option in the settings to cancel the scrolling. So you guys yeah. were certain well, that... Well, 10 frames a second was pretty upper limit for us with the uh, lowest in targets, like a 286, which is something that we said that we could run on, um, was really, really low end. Um, let's see. This is the way we brush your teeth to make them sparkle clean and neat. This is the way we brush your teeth so early in the morning. Oh, look at that. The reflection even has a, a state. Ah, good on them. <laughs> uh, the uh, lights. Uh, and why not? The reflection? Yeah, in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I, that's excellent. Alright, let's go find the... Uh, the puppy. Oh yeah, this was one of our... Uh... Yeah, I'm not gonna get, get this one timed right in my... Bullseye! Wow. Excellent. That was, I think, one of our first combination um, uh, click points where one, you could uh, get them to, um, you know, interact with each other, have a, you know, set up a, a state and then have another animation interact with that state. Uh, it was actually kind of cool. Um, so how, how did you I, sync those up according to the frame number in each one of them? Uh, yes, basically each uh, animation kind of had its own like little scripting engine that was running alongside of the animations. Um, and as they uh, got to a certain point, they would set a variable inside the animation. And that variable was basically pulled to when it was going to be shootable or not. And the other animation could check that actor's variable to see if it was set and then play a um, special case animation in that, which was uh, very cool. Here's a uh, Augie, uh, I believe, did all these book animations. These were actually surprisingly uh, hit a lot of the screen. thinking that the lack of surprise or any you know, facial expressions on uh, Fatty Bear, like his, he's completely fine with this hallucination happening, you know, to him. You know, you know like he books. is a toy bear that walks around the house. So, 
anything that's happening in the house is not that far fetched. Uh -oh. No, Nothing I talked there. When I asked Oops, Annie Fox if it was difficult for her as a writer to have to write something for each and every element in the game, because usually in adventure games you can interact with objects. But over here, because it's a kid's game, you can interact with any object. Any object you click on has to have something, because otherwise the kid would think that and then the game malfunctioned or something. And so was it fun for you to, you know, to change? I presume you had to upgrade many elements in the scum system to have so many active elements inside a scene. So was it fun to do that or uh, was it? It was very fun, actually. Um, the animation system that we had started at uh, Lucas, uh, we obviously continue to use it but we built upon that and as we got these hugely animated scenes actually even though right at the moment there's nothing happening on the screen uh, as you say the potential everything in this screen has as many animations as we could put in um, almost almost everything does something and yeah I, I thought it was really fun I, I remember spending a lot of time in this room you know clicking uh, as fast as I could on the books and getting, you know, testing the frame rate out. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a fun experience. The animation um, system was called uh, U-Sweat, and it used uh, the costume format um, that we did uh, for Vile, uh, except for it had a um, kind of an interesting little optimization technique so if you imagine that you took the screen and you chopped it up into a fine grid and if something was uh, repeated within uh, outside of that grid it would find it in um, like if it was a single layer of animation it could find if something moved through the screen uh, which was kind of cool so it was really easy to reference um, component cells and have them uh, be, you know, represented efficiently because it was only like maybe six bytes to have a cell be reused, whereas the cell itself was, you know, probably in the size of mm, 500 bytes. So a single reference costing you six bytes uh, is very efficient. So you can have lots of reuse of the same elements, but they can move across the screen fast. And efficiently. Let's see. I missed a few things here on the. Uh... All right. Nothing new I need to respond to. All right. Let's. Uh, do you mind if I just click on all the click points? Click on everything. I presume it was a pain to QA this thing because the, the QA department had to actually test each and every object. Well, we had a, a kind of an auto clicking system uh, where every item has, you know, whether it's interactable or not. So we had a, a script that just ran in the background that would hammer on every combination of things that you could do. And that was a kind of an automated test suite that we would just let the um, thing just click as fast as it could to see if there was any uh, deadlocks that you can get things into. Like the timing animation between the balloon and the uh, arrow and the chair baths there. Um, so you had you unit testing sure. back in 1993? Well, not really unit testing. It didn't test the code itself, but we had uh, like an automated player type of thing uh, which we used in our games um, quite a bit so and it would be two different levels of um, testing there's the ones that progress through the story and then the ones that don't progress through the story just literally random you know pick a point on the screen and trigger a click um, those you know 
produce, you know, similar results to your your average three year old playing <laughs> playing a game. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily have the dexterity, um, and you know, they can have input that wild is wildly around the screen. So, having those sort of test mechanics was necessary. Did I crash it? Nope. I got it. Uh, 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 uh. some crazy side effects in this game. Oh my! I mean, that's the beauty of this game. You have so many animations, more than the average adventure game, and still it's smaller than other full talky adventure games out there, even the shorter ones. Yeah, I think we really enjoyed um, Moon and this game a, a lot uh, because of the uh, just every scene was as feature filled as we could get it. And it, uh, it shows that we That's enjoyed That's the grown ups room. I'd better be quiet. Jeez. Wake them up. It's funny, uh, these uh, actors right here, I don't know if those were done as uh, image states or not, uh, but we had uh, different compression types for the, the rooms and the actors uh, had different performance characteristics. Like a, an object doesn't update that often. And it's usually a lot more colorful. And uh, so we had to put the room compressor, compression uh, support into the actor system uh, for some of these, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't know if it was. Uh, Why? Because one, they uh, animate all the time? Or because these are big animations, unlike the other ones? They, they were bigger and more colored. Uh, higher color depth, if you will. Uh, like most of our costumes, we either um, four color, eight color, or 16 color, or the biggies were like 32 color. And then if you want beyond that, we had to use the room compression scheme on it to get it to uh, uh, match the, the quality. Otherwise, when we had a low color depth, um, uh, like the, the three bit, uh, per pixel uh, compression scheme couldn't represent the range of obviously you know 64 colors uh, it was outside of that even though it was a tiny little palette um, there was still a fixed palette for a costume I don't know if that makes any sense but... it does Rifle through some drawers. Goodness, it's dark in here. Oh yeah, I remember the color fade also causing problems. Uh, on the 3DO, that uh, we didn't actually have a real palette on the 3D of the same way that we had on the VJ cards. So that little, you would think that changing Goodness, it's the color dark palette here. wouldn't have hit the hardware so much, but that required a full screen repaint as it was changing. Um, and that, uh, <laughs> such a simple thing you would think. It should have been just a simple palette change, but on the 3 do we had to redraw the entire screen as it, uh, as it did then. I remember that much. Let's see. 
how come Fairy Bear didn't have any sequels? Was it less successful than the other games? No, I think that there was a combination of things. There was it was written outside of um, the the character wasn't our own IP. Uh, I don't remember who if it was Annie's character or if it was uh, Lori Ballman's character. One one of them uh, owned the the character Fatty Bear. So it was a uh, really. It's a licensed IP. It is a licensed IP. It wasn't a humongous character by design. Hmm. So I can't remember whose teddy bear uh, story it came from. If it was Lori or or Annie, I don't remember which. It was probably Lori, a uh, kid who had a uh, fatty bear doll. See. Watch out for the pouncing bear! Oh, and there's a push fade that didn't show up uh, on our video capture here. It says bows and ribbons. That's a pretty one. Vertical scrolling. Vertical scrolling and hitting the uh, CRT Pelpan registers there to uh, do a, a fast shake, which was uh, independent of the actual blitter itself. Uh, so we could shake the screen as, as much as we wanted. Uh, would have thought that this game would be a great benchmark test for your system back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think it, it, back in the day, every every game every was game. a benchmark yeah. uh, up to a point. Uh, I think it wasn't until like 95 or 96 that uh, we got what we would consider uh, a platform that could do just about anything that we wanted. Um, with the exception of uh, uh, we didn't have unlimited memory. Um but we had unlimited uh, display potential. So it's like updating the screen and redrawing, you know, 80% of the screen, every frame in like 95 or 96. Um, on the low end was, you know, really tough, but your average um, computer that we were selling into was getting really fast from our perspective. Uh, so it was, it was less of a, uh, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> less of a benchmark system. I, I wish we had done more uh, benchmarking that we would have exposed because um, we used to use the logo as the benchmark. Uh, when you first start up the game, it would mm -hmm. draw the logo as many times as it could in the background and then basically count that. And, you know, there were times where it wasn't able to even update the, you know, the logo at that when you know where you were in for a bad time. Uh, on running the game so we would turn off certain types of animations that uh, would be although in this game we don't really have a lot of um, just kind of automatically animating elements except for like in the fish tank and things like that actually that that's a genius move on your part to hip, benchmark hip, the system hip. during the the logo animation i used to do that in flash whenever i would start an animation then you could you could check in the code how many frames per second you have at that particular time between, you know, two, um, two particular parts of the code, and then you can benchmark the 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 frame rate. And according to that, you would flip the quality from high to medium to low accordingly. Yes, we did. We didn't do. Uh, we would just turn off things more so than. Uh, choose um, like choose not to display something uh, we didn't really have a, a quality uh, like we didn't have every asset that had a, a different quality bar that it would be you know displayed with um, I don't think we did that ever we, we just turned them off so but, I, yeah I, having I, the ability 
I, I recently found out about the, the pirate on the chandelier in the scum bar in Monkey Island 1 that he is spinning on the chandelier, but if your system can't handle it, then the chandelier is static. And he's just sitting yes. there. And yeah, if I, I think that if the computer can't handle that either, then the pirate is gone. You don't have the chandelier at all. I'm not certain, but uh, I I read that or saw that a while ago. Yeah, the uh, the chandelier uh, having that animate and having the eye brush be able to walk around in that room um, was surprisingly taxing on the low end systems. I think even on uh, the higher end systems like the Amiga, we still had to. Uh, that was a pushing the limits of of the system, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> What's just funny, you know the the concept of animating a couple things on the screen at the same time being something that pushes yeah. your limits. Um, it's impossible. A by three today's twenty by two hundred animation that's taxing on the system. <laughs> yeah, at the at the time, it was like the ISA bus, which was um, on the PC side, our upper limit. You couldn't mem copy. You couldn't just copy. You know things as fast as you wanted there was like a i think a 10 megabyte upper limit of what you could do and that was if you were just sitting in a loop trying to copy things <laughs> uh, so you know you get a, a screen which is 640k i mean six six almost 64k um that you have to to blit um turns out that you can't do that a lot of times um uh, and do other things if you divide it into, you know, the 100 milliseconds that you have at 10 frames a second. Let's see. Beep Bloop asked a question about uh, TRE yeah. flip, etc. Yeah, there was lots of different compression schemes. Um, I, I'm glad people uh, went through and figured those out in ScumVM. Uh, there's a ton of different variations. If you uh, want to see the growth of the system, you can almost look at it um, better inside of ScumVM than you can inside of our own code base. Um, because there's, you know, all of the compatibility fixes and whatnot um, that they had to, by, un, you know, unassembling or disassembling things and figuring them out, it's pretty amazing. I was wondering how much of the Monkey Island 1 source code was in the source code of Fatty Bear just commented out. Because uh, so, when you reverse engineer, then you can't see what's commented out, but in the source code itself. You know, I think that there probably was some inventory management um, uh, scripts that were probably shared between uh, those products just because the kind of the nature the boilerplate if you will how you start a project we probably did start with uh, something along the lines of uh, uh, monkey 2 probably is probably where some of the structural elements came from the, the underpinning um, but um, and the obviously the engine all of that stuff was sitting there we didn't compile out things uh, very often Okay, so we have the ribbon. That's our first yes. inventory item. Yeah. I see. Can That's we... a pretty one. Oh, yeah, we didn't put those on the cursor, did we? Not when you couldn't do anything with it. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's progress the story a little bit. Thank you, Mousy. Wow, how that convenient. That bounces too oh. quick for me. <laughs> I was so about quick. to say, how convenient. <laughs> Let's see. What did we... I, I presume that since oh, it's a mouse, 
it wants cheese. Yes, or something. Either that or I was thinking that we might have to scare it with dog. Love the music in this game. So just absolutely mellow. <laughs> Hi, honey. I'll it's be a little late because I'm picking up Kayla's present at the pet store. Something that doesn't exist today, very, uh, an answering machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Hi, Kayla. See, do we actually... <laughs> He's making so much noise and he's shushing the phone. He was in the parents' room and made every object make the most the loudest sound possible and and now he's shushing the, the telephone yeah let's play the piano oh, consistency oh. oh yeah i remember this when we went to windows uh really uh, when uh pete crane uh did the conversion of uh, the DOS games to uh, Windows for the uh, Fatty Bear Fun Pack and the original Putt Putts and whatnot. And this just stressed our mixer out the way um, it was all set up. It triggered sounds so quickly that it uh, really put- Right, because uh, you had to stress. play so many sounds at once and it was taxing on the system. Yep. It was- uh, but I don't uh, remember having any problems on DOS uh, other than just keeping the assets in RAM. And of course, we won't do that. And we didn't uh, have a... Uh, these were actually not... Uh, Played with um, as a as an effect, or actually different sound effects for all of those, which ended up being not not a huge uh, disk space thing, but it was a like a managing hundreds of files because as you uh, change the pitch, it goes up like two point two um, in the pitch to keep these. Uh, different um, sound, or what do you call it, the scales, whatnot. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things in this room, besides the uh, dancing... Oh, wait, look at that. We don't have it. There was... Uh, or maybe it's over here. It's really... There we go. This was a huge freaking animation. That Jeez. and having fatty hair and uh, those two caused a tremendous amount of update. Because uh, you had the background to foreground copy, rendering fatty bear, and then rendering the uh, animation of uh, the, the hat rack there. I remember that was a painful uh, uh, thing on lowest in targets. And here's another one. This uh, was quite uh, quite distressing. But you can see that we also used uh, color cycling tricks to get some of the waves in the background to make it look like the, the whole screen is animating. But this one actually has a lot of animation in it, um, just in general. Wow, these are huge animations.
and these are uh, clickable as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys were just like Pixar because every time Pixar would release a short movie, be a short, yeah, a short movie before the the feature length movies they released, then it would always try out some new technology they had at the time. So for you guys, it was the mini games. The mini games were a great opportunity to test out various new technologies or test out the limitations of the system. Yeah, it, it was actually. We also enjoyed the mini games a lot uh, more because, you know, they were more complex. Because a lot of the types of um, constructs that when you're defining a click point animation, there's obviously a lot of code that is shared between objects. Like, is it active? Does it allow you to interrupt it, etc.? A lot of that code was being generated by, um, we had a, a tool called Flem, and Flem had these things that we called interactive templates. Um, kind of like how you have generics in TypeScript or you know, C++ uh, templates and whatnot. Um, and it would, you would um, set up what type of object you were, and you would say what type of cursor, all of these things were done in a in a tool, and then it would squirt out the code for you. And then they enjoyed writing the mini games because that actually you know, required a little bit more actual programming than just simply triggering a uh, a template that edits up edits the code for you. Now speaking of Flem and Bile, you know that today. 34 years ago today, Eric Wilmunder created the four floppy disks of the tools required to compile Loom with Flem and Bile and all of that. Yep. So Brian Moriarty completed his work on Loom on March 6th, 1990, and Eric Wilmunder compiled everything that Friday, which was March 9th, which is today. 34 years ago? 34 years ago. Wow. That's kind of crazy. In, in some respects, it seems like it was 34 years ago. In other respects, it seems like it was just three weeks ago. Uh, as far as, you know, the... Uh, yeah, that the time is funny that way. <laughs> Let's see. Objective has changed, yes. Oh, yeah, Patty Bear has to move to demonstrate these. Uh... There we go. That, that big uh, screen and the screen shake. That, that was a performance killer. <laughs> oh, such funny things. I, I was just looking at. Um, Pixie JS, uh, mm -hmm. they have a new benchmark out for their web GPU uh, uh, thing, and it defaults to a hundred thousand uh, bunnies mm -hmm. in their demo. <laughs> the uh, the ability to blit, you know, your heart's content these days. In Phaser 2.0, Pixie JS was the graphic renderer, and so the bunnies demo was also my benchmark for whenever I'd use Phaser. But now with Phaser's, Phaser 3, they no longer use PCJS. And the interesting thing about the animations in this game is that none of them relate to anything in the story. I mean, I presume that, for example, when there'd be something in Monkey Island that you have to change the scum system in order to accommodate its appearance in the game or whatever animation it plays, then that would make sense. But over here, it's, you just wanted to create this animation for fun and you change the scum system accordingly just to accommodate that. That's the beauty yeah. of it. Growth, <laughs> if you will. I, I think that uh, 
having such frivolous animations uh, really became expected. Just really great, you know. As Chwex tipped 10 uh, pieces of eight, if this game had copied Yogi Bear instead of Winnie the Pooh, then we could call you Albu Ubu Bear. Yep, but maybe if this game was called Yogi Bear in Israel, then you could still sue them. I, actually, he was in jail. This uh, looks like the, the place to bake Kayla's birthday cake. Really? Yeah, he was indicted. I'm allowed to call him a scam artist because he's legally a scam Hi, artist. Hi, Fatty Bear! I'm here to help with the cake! Thank you, Matilda Rabbit. Thank you, Zwix. I wonder if, uh... If this product started out as an official product, <laughs> that, I'm, I'm learning more about the uh, the uh, production company. On uh, that's funny. Well, hopefully they didn't get in too much trouble or do too much bad things. Hmm. Let's lay I wonder what's dog. in Kayla's present. <laughs> Goodness gracious, there goes Kayla's birthday present. I dare say that puppy is a scamp. I guess I better go find the puppy. Good thinking, Fatty Bear. Stalling. And skilled actors here. Yeah. Yeah, but that was... <laughs> Nothing in there. You've already there. done that in 1990s. The Secret of Monkey Allen. So, That's true. By this time... It's supposed to be standard. Nothing in there. Oh, yeah. I think I'll make a chocolatey here. chip birthday cake. Here's the recipe for it. One half cup milk. Hey, it's the three same quarters font. Cup sugar. As the recipe in Monkey Island 1. The font oh, at the is bottom. That? The font at the bottom. Oh, the yeah. Mixing group. Gotcha. Yeah, that's one of our uh, like handful of fonts that we have uh, use. Uh, the tool that we uh, used to design uh, fonts in uh, was relatively... Uh, not very highly used. I think we maybe had six or seven fonts. Um, I thought it was like three or four, but I, I found a, a number of font files recently that indicates that we had like six or seven fonts used with the tool. <laughs> Which certainly uh, uh, made a difference. When we went to, uh, we did a bunch of games called uh, Junior uh, Encyclopedias. And we had to completely redo the font system because instead of drawing, you know, just a handful of, you know, lines on the screen, uh, they wanted to display just huge amounts of text in, in comparison. So we had this like little HTML-like browsing system in um, in the Scum system, and having it render the fonts using the old font system was out of the question. So we built these things called warp fonts. <laughs> Funny. Two eggs, one and a half cups flour, a stick of butter, two teaspoons baking powder, one cup mini chocolate chips, one teaspoon vanilla, one teaspoon vanilla, one teaspoon vanilla. What? I'm surprised the spoon actually has. Um... I don't know if that's a video compression. One or teaspoon if it's, vanilla. Uh, uh, the, I don't see any issues. Oh, then it is on my side. Then uh, getting. The you know, video. it's interesting that back <laughs> then you'd have the to-do list available at all times because it was a kids game. But nowadays, because of so much hand-holding in adventure games nowadays, you have the to-do list in all of the adventure games available to you at any given moment. One teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, 
Let's get Yummy our cheese. cheese. You never know when I might need this. One stick of butter. I'll take that for the cake. Eggs. I need two of those for the cake. This looks like it's a, a bachelor's bone. refrigerator. You never know when I might need this. Well, we've got milk. <laughs> and it's fresh. <laughs> Talk about constraints on uh, display. And it's like the, the font uh, there is... It's I need this milk for the cake. Possibly get and still have it represent. Oh, that's actually kind of a dark animation. Oh, Jeez. So <laughs> Yuck! Leftovers again. Wait. So the inventory is limited to a certain number of objects. Uh, yes, it is. In the in this particular game, actually, I think with uh, I'm trying to think, uh, there was an, an actual inventory object limit. Um, I can't remember uh, what it was though. So was it the technical limit or, or a game design choice? Well, in this particular kids? case. It was a keep everything on the screen um, and not scrolling or anything like that. It was a design gotcha. choice. Uh, but in the system, there was some components that were limited to what we did because we treated the inventory uh, as a completely uh, separate rendering um, engine than uh, the top. Everything above the interface was different. And everything below the interface so anytime you say, saw something go between the two uh it was generally a uh, special case gotcha let's see i don't think there's anything else to pick up in here is there you don't need oranges i do believe there are some things in my pocket i need for the cake i should leave them on the counter Yes, wouldn't want you to try to use those someplace else and just have to actually do an animation for it. I, I presume this was done to avoid the situation in which the kid tries to pick up something and he has too many things in his pockets. Yes. Nothing in there. As well as the needing to provide feedback for them uh, in other contexts. Nothing in there. Sometimes... Uh, Things that were drawn in the inventory were done in the same palette, so every screen had to have a certain uh, number of palette slots left over for it. Uh, anything that could trans uh, be transported from room to room. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. I heard a cow. Well, that's just the LSD that uh, Fatty dropped. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. I found the letter Y. Yes, we can. Good evening, Fatty Bear. Now don't you stay up too late. Yes. Well, there's some Z clipping there, too. <laughs> In that particular case, I think we didn't... Um, uh, we still use Z planes in this game, too. So, like, uh, the clipping of the... Uh, birdhouse as it flies behind and clip behind this and yet go in front of it and that was done by a simple masking system I found the letter B that was another fairly sizable animation too compression wise there's a lot of end of uh, unique frames. I 
I need a remote control to open the garage. Okay. <sighs> no, by today's standards, this game is pretty difficult. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't uh, do a lot of uh, prompting. It's kind of chill. It's chill on your just let you do whatever you want. And it doesn't, you know, force you very often down a particular path. Fatty Bear, I was just upstairs. The puppies run off with the letters for the happy birthday sign. Oh, gracious. I think Gretchen might need your help up in Kayla's room. All right. We'll get you back in the box later. Let's go find that remote. I wonder where this goes. Here oh, goes this was nothing. another animation that I remember. Um, Stressing the uh, system, look out below. Wow, that's insane. Hey, I found the garage door opener. Now I can get in the garage. There was uh, loading the, the content and making sure it didn't, um, you know, kind of stutter when starting the animations. We, we started doing some preloading of those things. I'm sorry, my cat is going crazy behind me. Let's see. What can do it to it's it's placing the the clothes back again in the dirty basket. That's true. You wouldn't want to, you know. Yeah. Make make you know, mom or dad uh, confused <laughs> on what happened. <laughs> Got to leave everything exactly the way it was. And vacuum bags, what a scam that was. You know, the things you see as a tub. Or what do you call it? Uh... You stop that. Look what the puppy's done to the garden. You're so dirty from digging in that garden. Now I'm going to have to give that puppy a bath. Oh, here's an interesting animation. I remember this. Uh, if you yeah, that uh, obviously was stressing the sound system too um, on the looping of that uh, audio. Uh, I remember this animation, uh, the way it was drawn, it, you know, each frame as it as it rises was really like a reference to the to the last frame and it uh the compression scheme that we had kind of went nuts with it um and it, it uh you know it started taking like the top of the screen and um or the top of the tree and finding you know elements of it because they had uh well anyway it it, it it blew up my compressor. <laughs> Wait, so couldn't you have just moved the tree and then added the, the back burner in the Z plane behind it? Or did you have to um, animate the whole thing? In this particular case, it was um, done in uh, Deluxe Paint Animate, and which was, had no layers. Um, so mm -hmm. it was done... All so, it has to, together. so it was frame by frame animation for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. 
Jeez. And, uh, and then the compressor itself would find the commonalities as it was rising and behind the, uh, the cloud of smoke. It uh, required a few changes, if I remember correctly. These little guys, I w always wanted to make a game with just them. The carrots? Yeah, I thought they would have made a great platformer uh, character. Look at those silly yeah. carrots. <laughs> I love the All one right, that, right, that's hitting it. its head on the, on the ground. Gotta make these stop. Stop. <laughs> so, first of all, hi, Adventure Game Hotspot. And Fire Maid Prime wrote Humongous Entertainment for Life. I presume it's a for more employee. Oh, th is this coming through Twitch? I ended up closing. No, it's one. on. It's on YouTube. Oh, hello. Fire Mage Prime, make yourself known if you want. Yes. We're not doxing <laughs> anyone at this point. <laughs> All right, we got the image. Yes. I'm going to play some bowling. This was a, a, a fairly fun. Uh, Boy, is this ball heavy. I remember uh, Brett working on this, you know, for well, weeks, uh, getting it. Uh, I'm terrible at it. Look at this. I can't even get it. No, it's just the zoom delay. <laughs> I'm just terrible at Speaking of Adventure Game Hotspot, we've got zero the zero Adventure Game Hotspot zero. convention in the US in the in late July. And there's a Kickstarter running at the moment with just a few days left. And so it's the first Adventure Game convention in the US. So you guys really? should check it out. Yeah. Ron Gilbert will join them. It's mainly a Sierra reunion at that point because there are many Sierra people that will join, but there are some LucasArts people as well. It will either join in as guests or will have panels in the convention. That's cool. And where's that located? Or is it will it be in, in, in Tacoma. In oh, really? Ju July 27th or 28th. So Adventure Game Hotspot, if you're still in the chat, you can post the link to the Kickstarter if you want. A telescope. Wow, another planet. I thought there was a scroll that you could do here. I guess I'm misremembering. I wonder what this does. I don't think there's anything else that we need to get up here, right? No hints. <laughs> oh, should I have been able to see butt on the moon there? Let's try it again. No, I think you're not making the telescope. Yeah. 
clicking too early. Those are the Big Dipper stars. Well, if it isn't my little friend Putt Putt. Hey! You and Putt Putt. Wonder why we didn't bring in the audio, too. Yeah. Probably. I wonder what Putt Putt's doing on the moon. Here I go. Yeah, I seem to remember something about this animation being bugged at some point as well. Oh dear, I can't get back in there. It's locked on this side. to get that puppy back into her box. So Kaiser Ruby just um, super chatted and he wrote, Hi Brad, I just wanted to thank you and your team for this game, Freddy Fish and Spy Fox. They're amazing games from my childhood. Well, you're, you're welcome. I will pass on the thanks to all the team members as well. It, uh, it was amazing uh, to see the products grow over the years, and I'm glad you enjoyed them. Let's see, where's the room? Over here. So it was interesting that in our generation, Hi there, there are sub-generations. In, in, uh, in our generations, there are sub-generations uh, that played different games in their childhood. So for example, I was too old to play the, um, the Putt Putt games and Fatty Bear's surprise party at the time, but I did play Day of the Tentacle. And while people who are younger than me played these games and then played Curse of Monkey Island as their first adult adventure game. And so they have a they had a vastly different experience than I had in the world of adventure games in terms of what they consider a classic or things that are nostalgic for them. Well, you started with some pretty decent titles. I mean, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Day of the Tentacle is a great, is a great. No, uh, I started with Maniac Mansion, but I'm just saying that at the time, oh. while kids were playing putt but i played day of the tentacle which came out the same year as but but and his uh, fatty bears uh, birthday surprise happened the puppies run off with three of the letters for the happy birthday sign i can't spell happy birthday without them guess what gretchen i have some letters for the happy birthday sign oh thank you would you please put the letters on the bulletin board for me Sure I will, Gretchen. Oh, thank you. Oh, and Fatty Bear? I've got a lot of decorating to do. Could you also blow up five balloons for me, please? They're right there on the toy shelf. I'll do it, Gretchen, because what is a party without balloons? That's one balloon, Fatty Bear. Watch it! Four more to go. Is that a threat, Gretchen? That's two balloons, <laughs> Fatty Bear. Three more to go. What do you think you're doing? So that means we need to solve the puzzle of placing him in the box first. Ah. Clever. All right. Where is that last letter? Is it me? I hope you Since put those letters up on the a... bulletin board soon, Fatty Bear. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So Adventure Games Hotspot says, I'm not ashamed to say that, that I played these bath. games I when I was supposedly too the old. Tub. <laughs> You're never too old for these. We, uh, you know, even though we had listed an upper age range, which I never agreed with, you know, the three to eight or three to, you know, whatnot, there was no upper age. <laughs> see. If we clean him now, he doesn't get dirty again, does he? Fetch! Now we need some water. Do you need any soap? I need some soap. Oh, look at that color cycle, need too. More water. Wow. <laughs> Went all out on the, on the animation. <laughs> all right. Are you clean now? Well, it's nice to it's rediscover these games whenever I play them with my kids. It's a bone. How to get him out of the tub? Does he just get out of the tub eventually? Maybe throw the bone down the toilet. <laughs> Maybe it's he'll follow bone. it. Nope. I I'm, I'm kidding, of bone. course. You know. <laughs> this looks like fun. Just wash the. Look out below! Uh, no, that's not a letter, is it? We had letters when we went up to the thing already, did we? Okay, so we went up the treehouse, we used the telescope. Right, was there a letter up there? No. Oh, we have the remote now, at least. The happy birthday puzzle was an, was an unfair puzzle in the Hebrew version because they didn't translate the letters or the puzzle. So the kids had to write happy birthday in English. In the game. Oh, that's a. <laughs> now that's... I can get in the garage. <laughs> that's an oversight. That's a huge oversight, actually. Considering that's. Well, the... they did record the, the voices in the warehouse. I think we've established that. So I don't think <laughs> the kids were, were their highest priority at the time. That's the sugar I need for the birthday cake. But I can't reach it. Oh, dear. That's the sugar I need for the birthday cake. I can use this to get the sugar. Doesn't everybody store their sugar in the garage? <laughs> It's like five pounds of sugar over there. I think these stars were also uh, color cycling as well. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh wait, I bet the letter is in the mailbox, isn't it? It's a present for Kayla. Nope, I was wrong. 
It's a present for Kayla. It's a present for Kayla. By the way, the... The voice actor who voiced Fatty Bear also voices Bowser in various Super Mario titles. I did not know that. Now you do. They should call pest control. Yeah, there's a number of mice in this house, aren't there? I mean, this house doesn't look safe for kids. No. Oh, wonderful! The key to the attic! With the dress up here, I, there was a point, I don't know if we left it in the game, but he dresses up like um, Madonna. At some point, I don't know if that made it to the final game. Okay. <laughs> Her Vogue uh, outfit, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, I presume I that the rating system the didn't exist back then. It came out like two years later with Phantasmagoria. Yeah. And Doom. Yeah, and, and Doom. Yeah. We were, uh... Yep, with yeah. the cone bra. Yeah, leave that one. <laughs> oh no, it's stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. Not Let's too see. shabby. Oh yeah, and he doesn't move during any of this because these were objects. These weren't, um, I don't think that they were actual costumes. So you just place them over the, yeah. the character itself? Yeah, I think he was—he wasn't an actor in that uh, area. I think uh, Dave Timoney might have been uh, the one that did this, if I remember correctly. Maybe I better put these things back. So Jeff from Twitch asks, how much interaction was there between scum devs and game devs? Uh oh, between the engine, it was we. Uh, we talked constantly throughout the day. Uh, about work and, or just other stuff? <laughs> uh, about <laughs> about work and other stuff. Uh, as we uh, were doing these first few projects, we were a relatively small team. I think we had uh, five game programmers, three testers, and maybe six artists uh, at our at the beginning while we were doing these games. And uh, yeah, we pretty much shared a, a small office. It's probably 3,400 square feet, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we uh, we were quite quite close quarters. So we we talked all the time. Uh, late into the night, we uh, ate so much Pizza Hut that we uh, just uh, became loathsome of you know pizza. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever had Pizza Hut, uh, but it's kind of a buttery crust. And uh, after you eat your 50th, you know, piece of in pizza. A, in a pool of grease. <laughs> exactly. It's not. 
not not pleasant and after a point. I don't think there's anything I have to do in there. Uh, maybe the letter is in the parents' bedroom. No, parents Pizza Hut bedroom, was even online. more popular in, in Europe and, and in Asia. And have you seen that movie Demolition Man? Is that with, uh, with Wesley Silvest Snipes? Yeah, with Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone. So if you watched, I presume you watched the U US version in which all of the restaurants in the future are Taco Bell. And so when the movie came out over here and across Europe, they didn't want to add product placement for Taco Bell because there weren't any Taco Bell restaurants in Europe or Asia. So they changed it to Pizza Hut. And so, first of all, they superimposed the Pizza Hut logo on all of the Taco Bell logos in the movie. And they had the, the actors redub their lines, saying Pizza Hut instead of Taco Bell. Right. Fano tipped five dollars. That's a... Uh... Thank you, Fano. And in addition to that, the thing... I noticed that I didn't notice that as a kid, but I noticed that later in life. And then I saw that uh, they're mouthing something else. They're not saying Pizza Hut. And then I found out about it. And what was odd was that they didn't even eat pizza. So that didn't even make sense in the in the context of the of that change. So yeah, so we had Pizza Hut and we ate a lot of Pizza Hut. Same here, uh, but and we ate a lot of Taco Bellas for that matter. They uh, they are the source of uh, many a lunchtime uh, trips to Taco Bell. They were, you know, we had two different Taco Bells. One was uh, up uh, a good ways from it, and we always went to that one rather than the one that was closer because it was better. <laughs> Slight quality concerns at the one it's not quite hip hop hoop oh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank on where this other letter is at is it in their fridge what's up with the tissue box <laughs> uh -huh. ah chew to you too Yeah, we, we don't know which of the parents uh, side of the bed is. <laughs> but we, we probably have a guess. <laughs> I do believe there's something in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave it on the counter. You in the fridge? No, not in the oven. Do we need to consult a walkthrough? <laughs> we, we might have to. Where is this other? I think we've been everywhere. It's not in the garden, not in the treehouse, not in the garage, not in the uh, parents' room, not uh, in the attic. Unless I totally blocked it. All right. Oh, in the aquarium. Interesting. Let's give that a shot. Can we make the... Uh, no, we don't have the bowl. I still need to find some things before I can mix up the cake. Yesterday I saw Kayla playing with the mixing bowl. Then maybe I'll find it laying around somewhere. Wait, but we looked in the aquarium, right? We talked about the animations. Did we ignore that? No, we did. But did we do that before the the dog got out of the box? Or out of the present? Oh, here's huh. an A. Look at that. 
Those would be in the third letter. Right. I found the letter A. I'd better save this for Gretchen's birthday sign. Wow, this game is impossible by today's standards. I still need to bake the birthday cake and put the puppy back in the box before Kayla wakes up. Alright. Now we need to find a, a bowl. Put the letters up. Get the puppy back in the thing so we can blow the balloons up. Gretchen, I have some letters for the happy birthday sign. Oh, thank you. Would you please put the letters on the bulletin board for me? Sure I will, Gretchen. Those are the I letters for Gretchen's sign. The, uh, the decorating of the cake. We had to uh, uh, put a kibosh on the amount of time the testers were allowed to play in it. They uh, managed to uh, just play that way more than testing some of the other rooms for whatever reason. Hooray, hurrah! I spilled happy birthday! Hooray, hurrah. Let's go... All right. You'd think I would remember at this point, but I don't. Bowl's not in here. I guess it's probably in the garage. Wait, have we have we found anything in the attic? Um. I mean. We were there. Yeah, we were there, but I don't And know we... The door is locked. The door is locked. Okay, so we had the costume changes. We had the annoying TV. Was there anything of value here? I don't think so. I don't remember the dates. So you, you opened the attic for nothing? I mean, we solved the puzzle for this. We got the cheese. Yeah, we've got all that. That's a pom pom. Maybe I'd better put this back. Yes, the dress up game must be the reward. <laughs> I, I think that might be the case. Okay. I think we've clicked on everything. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. I'm not going to click the television that set thing again. Hm. All right. Now we're just going to be walking endlessly until we find this darn ball. Wait, let's get the, the dog in the box. Can you do that? Oh yeah, so we can blow up the balloons. Good girl. I'll bet this ribbon would keep the puppy in the box. But how would she breathe, Fatty? Well, Fatty doesn't need to breathe. Why would I let why would a puppy? <laughs> Let's put it in a bag and leave it on the street. Uh, all right. So we got him there. Let's go. Hey, Maybe Kayla. He, here's a dead dog.
Mike Mega in the chat says, I always used to do that as late into the game as possible because I had internalized that there were no holes. That's a better balancing act than I've seen in the circus! <laughs> That's three balloons, Fatty Bear. That's three balloons, Fatty Bear. Two more to That's four balloons, Fatty Bear. One more. I mean, you could have done the guy That's brush route. five balloons, Fatty Bear. Great job, Fatty Bear. You could have gone the guy brush route by saying that, you know, the dog can hold her breath for 10 minutes or whatever. All right. I don't remember seeing a, a bolt. Nothing in here. Uh -oh. Nothing in there. Alright, now this is just sad. <laughs> <laughs> I need a remote control to open the garage. Thanks, Fatty oh, Bear. We have one. Now I can get in the garage. Yeah. Oh, wait. We've been here. Yes, we have. And I just... No scrolling over. It's not hidden. Dear Lord, where is this? Freaking ball. So, so that's the great thing about text play. The fact that when I play with the developers of these games, it's the first time they played it in like several decades. And so they struggle just as much as we did back in the day. Even more so. Yeah, I would say definitely more so. Been down It's not in the. It's not. Hmm. This is uh, not in the toilet. Not in the thing. Let's go down here. <laughs> Play something really in the toilet. Look out below. There's just a vacuum in here. Bowl. This will come in handy for the cake. What? What is he doing there? Uh, he's getting the dirt for the uh, cake. <laughs> All right. I do believe there's something in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave it on the counter. There's another item we're missing. What, what have we not got here? We have the vanilla, spoon of vanilla, yeah. and we have and butter, we have the eggs. One cup mini chocolate chips. Two teaspoons baking powder. Now we're missing... Nothing in there. Oh, baking powder, vanilla. Vanilla, I need that for the cake. Sardines. Baking powder, this will help my cake Maybe rise. Chips. I'll definitely yeah, need chocolate chips the, for a chocolatey mix. chip cake. Now, this was the most important cabinet of all. Mm. 
I do believe there are some things in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave them on the counter. Now do we have everything? Yes, I think we do. It looks like I need a measuring cup if I'm going to make a cake. Joseph Austin says somewhere was a I child who went into their kitchen and made a cake. giant mess trying to follow the recipe. <laughs> I think there was more than one. All right, where are you measuring cup? Nothing in there. Let's say making a giant mess was the least. This will help me mix the batter. I can measure things for the cake in this. The least I of, always use of measuring spoons when I bake a cake. Somewhere there was probably a kid who placed his dog in a box with no holes. And I do believe there are some things in my pocket I need for the cake. I should leave them on the counter. I need three quarters of a cup of sugar. Here we go. I need one and a half cups of flour. Bullseye! I need one half cup of milk. I hope I don't spill it. Like the oh, little cow am kind I of careful? Looks probably done by Brad Carlton. Uh, just looking at the way it looks kind of reminds me of uh, his style. Mmm, vanilla smells good. It's time for baking powder. Okay, eggs, do your stuff. Mmm, yummy. One cup mini chocolate chips. I am mixing a birthday cake, a birthday cake, a birthday cake. It is one I soon will pick for Kayla's birthday party. <laughs> I'm all done making the batter. Now I need to bake it. I'll put the cake in the oven for you, fatty. Thank you very much, Matilda Rabbit. She's the only responsible adult in this game. The cake is done. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It smells wonderful. Now you can decorate it. Decorating will be fun. Sure it will. Right, there you go, Kayla. Is that enough? Here it is, a chocolatey chip birthday cake. That's lovely! You are an excellent cake baker, Fatty Bear. I'll carry the cake up to the bedroom for you, Fatty Bear. Thank you very much, Matilda Rabbit. There you go, Kayla. Uh, a cake with the letter B. Right. And three Fatty Bears, don't forget that. <laughs> we should do this every night, Fatty Bear. This is fun! Phew! All done! Now everything is ready for Kayla's party. I should go to Kayla's room before she wakes up. Fatty, you have done a wonderful job. I'm so excited. I hope Kayla wakes up soon. I'm so worried that I'm feeling quite sick. Fatty Bear, Fatty Bear, get to bed quick! Good morning! Oh my goodness, what a surprise! Everything looks beautiful! Happy birthday, Kayla! We have a surprise for you! Oh, a puppy! This is the best birthday I ever had! Thank you, Fatty Bear! Oh, thank you, everybody! I don't know, the parents kind of suck. They took credit for the whole thing. 
<laughs> they weren't surprised by the lit cake or anything. Wow. That, uh, that was embarrassing there for a while with the, uh, the darn, uh, bowl. <laughs> Well, that's the problem with live streams. We can't we can't even edit this part out to make it seem as if we knew what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh... wait. So adding the carrots and the the credit sequence was your idea, since you love them so much. No, I think it was Brad Carlton uh, who drew them and uh, had them here. Hey, hey Brittany Taylor. Eric. Add Eric. Eric's finally credited in our stuff. Uh, there was what are you a, talking uh, about? Eric is always credited. Uh, he's always credited up to a point, and then at some point, uh, the humongous products, we, um, not we, uh, somebody decided to not credit him uh, <laughs> on some of them. Well, maybe there are major changes in the product, so they just decided not to credit him at all. Hey, you can click the carrots! Hey, it's puppet! And an off-model teddy bear. This is the, the one I like. <laughs> the headbanger? The headbanger. I, I, still, I definitely think these would have been a, a good character for a, a platformer. Let's create a platformer with these carrots. Who owns the rights to these games nowadays? Uh, Tomo. I, I don't think Tomo owns the rights to this one. Cause it's not. Um, it's not up on Steam, is it? It is on Steam. It is on Steam. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Tomo is the uh, IP owner of this part of the uh, Humongous franchise. Uh, the sports Damn. teams went somewhere. And then the uh, Moonbase Commander got sold as a separate IP block. Mike says I would have played a game like Lemmings with these things. Bye. Thanks for helping. Wow. That would have been a good game to, to clone, that's for sure. I did the bot below. Baruch haba leolam hakef. Be'eze bishak ata bocher. This is the hero version again. We also translated the, the the activity pack, which again is pretty embarrassing because. The Aristo. When you choose the difficulty, again, you need to know English. So. Hmm. Kadiba, bonus check. Tsvia, oh yofi. Not a bug, but there's a point that the little. Uh... Fatty Bear cheats at some point in that game. Uh, when the number of cards gets to a certain point, there's a, a point where they uh, were kind of making him, you know, play fairly and not, you know, know what cards were in your hand. Mm -hmm. But I believe that there is one uh, case where Fatty Bear absolutely cheats. <laughs> He, he does a little smirk when it happens. By the way, what's up with the lack of colors? Why only five colors? Was this some sort of limitation? We did the color mixing. Um, I think it was so you could create your own uh, color palette. Um, I'm pretty sure you can mix colors. Uh, so if you click on the red and put it over in the blot on the left, Oh, gotcha. Wait, I and then can I... place them over here? Like well, so? I don't think so. Wait. Yeah, so... Oh, so. Okay. And then mix. Wow. So it teaches the kids to mix colors as well. Yes, the, and it, you can even get the, the fugly gray. Uh, if you mix enough of... Uh, it will turn into 
there. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, we did, I think, reuse the same uh, room code uh, for uh, the Let's Explore series. Okay, Brad. So this was fun and not not uh, embarrassing at all that it took us two hours to finish the game. <laughs> Let, let's just say that it was our original plan to finish it in two hours. Not not a uh, we did it on purpose. Absolutely. And of course, now that we we finished Fatty Bears. Birthday surprise. I think we should also play Butt Butt at some point in time. Which is your favorite Butt Butt? My favorite Butt Butt? Um, well, based on playing the uh, Zoo is my absolute favorite of the Butt Butts. Um, they, they push things in different directions. Uh, the, uh, the chatting monkey or the joking monkeys, the rhyming monkeys, and the uh, a Zoo song push the engine in different ways that it had. Um, so Zoo is my my favorite. Uh, close second is uh, Moon. Uh, just yeah, everyone the loves Moon. Fantastic. The music is fantastic in Moon. If you listen to it on um, the in the original midis, they are great. On a Roland MP, uh, you know, MT. MT32, yeah. Yeah, it, it's amazing. I believe that's what we captured um, and recorded the audio for the 3DO versions off of that. So Moon is the first one my daughter played, and I really liked it. And when I asked Annie Fox what's her favorite butt butt game, she also said Moon because she also... It has writing credits on that one as well. So, um, yeah. So, Moon is everyone's favorite. So, I think we should play But But Goes to the Moon. All right. Let's do that. I'm, I'm sure that I'll I'll play it this time before. <laughs> no, you shouldn't play it because I think that if we would have known what to do inside the game. I was joking before. But if we would have known what to do beforehand, then the stream would have been 30 minutes and wouldn't have been... That fun. Oh, by the way, someone said speed speed run time. It's interesting. I want to see what's the speed run world record for Fatty Bear. What do you think it is? Uh, thirty five seconds. I think one of the butt butts is is less than a minute. Fatty Bear's birthday surprise. Let's see. I can believe there's the activity pack. Okay, Fatty Bear's birthday surprise. The world record is 3 minutes and 25 seconds. And it was set four months ago. Wow. And, bef and before that, there was the 3 minutes and 34 seconds, which was set five years ago. So people haven't played it for five, be haven't beat the world record for five years. And then four months ago, someone from the US did. J2XP. Interesting. Well, that's, some of these games are, well, you know, with the with the right uh, audience, <laughs> don't take two hours. <laughs> Maybe we should try to beat that world record. Anyway, thank you again, Brad, for joining me for this very fun live stream today. And we'll talk about the the putt putt. We'll schedule a putt putt live stream in the future. And thank you everyone for joining us. And I'll see you all on Monday. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And Brad. Bye. Bye. <laughs>